<laughs> so now I'm with my team. I've been asked to set up the arena. So yeah, let's just go set up the arena. Yay! We've set up an arena with some obstacles. Let's see how it goes. We managed to get 7 out of 7 here and I think we managed to detect all on our app as well Yeah, so I think we did a pretty good job So right now our car is charging So in the meantime, I think it's a good time for us to cut to interviews So let's go Having two computer engineers in our team is a real advantage. We can easily bounce off each other's ideas and find the optimal solution for the problem. For instance, we encountered an issue with our robot's turning radius. Initially, I calibrated the robot to turn at the tightest radius due to the small arena size. However, when our algorithm team wanted the turning to be 30 by 30 centimeters, we had to react fast. We considered recalibrating for a wider turn, but that would mean spending a lot more time. So I suggested using our current calibration and added compensation to fit the grid. This way, we avoided deadlocks and the rest of the team could continue to test their software components and come up with the solution of the wider turn. Apart from working with each other, we also bounced off ideas with the Raspberry Pi team of Valentino, who was integral to link different parts of the group together. One of my main challenges is translating high-level commands from the pathfinding algorithm into something our SDM controller can understand. The SDM team used the keyboard as a reference for movement protocol, so WASD for the cardinal movements. On the other hand, the algorithm uses JSON commands like move forward with a certain distance and turning that is in some degrees, meaning that I had to translate these movements correctly for SDM to understand. Another challenge I faced was figuring out the inter-process communication as I was using the multi-processing library to run local processors. I needed to ensure that the pipelines that I built were flowing to the right places and whether the libraries I used were actually compatible with multi-processing as well. Firstly, I had crowdsourced the collection of about 6,000 images. Then, as the task may also be indoor or outdoor, I had augmented my dataset to account for this varying brightness, noise, exposure, blur, and even rotations due to the uneven floor surface. And as a result, there were more than 14,000 images to train. Finally, for object detection, I had used YOLO V8, which is an anchor-free object detector. Some training parameters here will be importantly to set the flip LR and flip UD to be zero. And because this will ensure that your images are not mirrored left, right, or up, down. We developed a simulator that allows us to test our algorithm on different courses. We use a WebSocket API to communicate with both the simulator and the real robot. Our algorithm has two phases, high-level path and low-level path. The high-level path decides the order to visit obstacles. We use the Hamilton path algorithm to find the optimal sequence. The low-level path decides how to visit an obstacle. We started with Dublin's paths, then changed to Red Shirt paths. For it allowed for very efficient walks, it caused issues with hardware calibration. Therefore, we switched to state lattice graphs, then we shifted the robot to easily testable movements. For the Android module, we created an app that serves as a remote control to our robot. The app has various steps that allows us to send messages to and through the archive, set up the arena, and manually control the robot. We also have a separate interface that allows us to connect with other devices via Bluetooth. It wasn't long later that we had to execute task 1. Say start, you say stop. Ah. When you're ready. Oh. Unfortunately, we placed our robot car in the wrong direction and it went out of the box. We were discouraged by it but chose to remain optimistic for the rerun. Everyone was overjoyed that our rerun was a complete success. Mistakes were made, but we had to move on. Now, on to week 9. Hey guys, so this is week 9. And this is our final prep. We already have some calibration done. We're just like fine tuning. La. So we try to test everything practically. Yes, that's right. End to end testing. We're just swapping the position. Hopefully, it will improve the accuracy of the robot. We just rotated the sensor. We add a spacer over here. If we put it the same way uh, with the Cables facing up, you actually look to the back. Unfortunately, our ultrasound sensor was unable to detect the second obstacle. This led us to be disqualified from the second task. But hey, you win some and you lose some. It's been a this has been one of the most draining and time-consuming modules that SESC has ever created. 
but it's the time that we've spent together that has made us closer as groupmates and as friends. <laughs>